and we are very pleased to have one of our dear friends, Dr. Jill Farrell from Barry University, the Associate Dean of the School of Education, back with us. It's your third time on the show. Great to have you with us again. It's great to be back, Dwight and Alicia. So good to be here, thanks. And of course, so good to be back in the Bahamas. I feel like I'm coming home now. Yeah, I think you are. <laughs> Definitely. And you're here at this wonderful time, um, back to school. Most of the public schools will be opening on Monday. And we know every time we're here, we talk about special needs children. And we know we have a growing, growing challenge in this country. We have more special needs children than we are willing to admit. But for parents, for teachers now, who will be dealing head on with this issue next week especially, what advice can you give them at this time as we prepare to send the kids back to the classroom? I think, um, Dwight, I think what's really important is for parents to recognize as the school year begins, um, they have to become a partner with their child's teacher. The, the, I can't stress enough the importance of the homeschool relationship. And so while many parents, especially mothers, mothers often have a kind of gut level instinct, you know what, I'm not sure if my child's making the right progress, there's something wrong, I have older children, I see the neighbor's children, you know, I see that my child's struggling a little bit with things that are going on in school. The parent needs to be proactive versus reactive. And of course at the beginning of a school year when teachers are just getting used to their class, just becoming familiar with students it's really the parents opportunity to at the very beginning of the year for a parent rather than wait the parent to say you know do me a favor can you keep an eye on Dwight you know I remember at the end of last year he didn't um, finish the school year at the place that I think he should have been I worked with him all summer but we struggled a little bit it was always a, a clash because of course as a parent you can't always work with your child um, I want to stay on top of things so I think often Oftentimes parents don't recognize their rights mm -hmm. as parents um, and that they have to be an advocate for their child. But should you be comparing your children to other children? Is it fair to them? Not necessarily comparing because every child develops at a different right. rate, of mm -hmm. course. But, but again, I think it's important that each parent, and I think a good teacher, a gifted teacher, recognizes that and won't compare. But, you know, unfortunately, we do live in an age of accountability. Testing is really important. And whether we compare a child or not, unfortunately, that's what the system does. The system is, and, and I'm not going to say that that's fair because that's the system that we all live in now globally. Uh, children are measured by the same standards and we have an, a one size fits all kind of standard. So whether we want to compare children or not, unfortunately the system does do that. So, we, you know, and every child should make certain progress. So yes, you're right, we don't always compare children one to the other, but we do want to see a child wherever they are making adequate progress. So if a child is standing standing still, not making forward, and not able, you know, and then especially we see the child becomes frustrated, the child acts out, so you see a lot of behavioral and emotional kinds of issues, and, and oftentimes those surface in a classroom um, in, in a different way than they surface at home. And so, again, it's important for a parent to be constantly communicating. And conversely, from a teacher's perspective, I know I'm doing a professional development session today at Genesis Academy, where we hold some of the Barry University classes. And some of the things I'll be talking about with the teachers this morning are um, the parent-child, you know, the homeschool relationship. Yes. And as from a teacher's perspective, how important it is to be constantly communicating with a parent to fill the parent in on, this is what I'm seeing, right. you know, I'd like you to, you know, help me out here a little bit, tell me a little bit about your child. But when you're a teacher in a classroom with maybe 30 students or more, how, how can you be paying so close attention to what's happening with that one student in the corner there? I mean, what, what can you do? You're, you've well, got all these challenges facing. You're 100% right, Dwight, and that's the complexity of teaching. You know, teaching is, we used to hear, oh, anybody can be a teacher. Teaching isn't rocket science. Actually, teaching is rocket science because you are trying to meet the diverse needs of all of those children in your classroom. And the, the we often see in, in primary grades, in the primary grades, children are coming into school now more and more at a disadvantage because you have some children coming in that have maybe had some preschool experience or families have worked with them at home, and then other children coming in who have 
have absolutely no school experience. So uh, teachers who teach in the primary grades have the biggest challenges ahead of them because they're seeing children who don't have school skills. They don't have those social skills, and so oftentimes that gets confused with the lack of academic ability. And so, yes, the teacher has to be has to really um, be at their game, top of their game, which is why um, honing their skills, working on advanced degrees, going back to school, continuing to learn more best practices, research-based best practices. Optimally, we want teachers to be continuous lifelong learners and always adding to their own strategies. Very good. Question, they're going back to school, our teachers, what advice would you give to them? You know, it's the beginning of school, how should they be preparing themselves? Well, I think, again, I think that one of the most important things uh, the teacher has to do at the very beginning of the school year is to get to know their students, to take time to get to know every child. Every child is a unique individual, as you said, um, Dwight, and so I think it's important that the teacher at the very beginning of the year begin to know who those children are, their strengths, their weaknesses, their likes, their dislikes, and at the same time get to know their parents and, the, and their families, because that often has a lot to do with it. If there's a stressful situation going on in the home, an ill family member, or dad's lost his job, or you know mom had to go take care of grandma on another island, and now the child's there at home, maybe with older siblings, helping them get ready. You know, that's a very stressful way to start out the school year. So I think one of the most important things is first get to know your students. Get to know your students' families. And then, um, and so that's oftentimes that means kind of assessing where the child is. Um, I think it's important that, you know, every single school year, every child has to start off with a clean slate. So don't listen to, you know, oftentimes teachers in schools talk to each other yes. from one grade to the next. And mm -hmm. so if I was Dwight's teacher last year and Alicia's Dwight's teacher this yeah. year, I certainly don't want to <laughs> say to Alicia, oh, watch out for that Dwight. He gave me a run for my money last year. And Alicia should not. So, so it's my, my obligation as a professional to be very discreet and to you know keep um, any thoughts I might have about a former student to myself as well as the new teacher you know starting off the school year really needs to give every child a fresh start. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good.